Hey, how is it going everybody? Today we'll be recreating Han's Veilside Fortune Mazda RX-7 FD from the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift using the Bravado Banshee 900R. Now I know I'm late to the party with this build, but people have been requesting that I do this build for a very long time. I ended up holding off on doing it for a while and eventually I just decided to wait and see whether or not the Anna ZR350 from the Los Santos Tuners update would have any more modifications that would allow us to make a better replica of Han's car. But in my opinion, this just wasn't the case, which is a shame. There just aren't enough modifications available for the ZR350 to get a good match to Han's car. On the other hand, the Bravado Banshee 900R, while not being directly based off of a Mazda RX-7, still has a lot of styling cues like the wide body and the fixed headlights, along with a livery that allows it to be a really close match to Han's car, which is why I ended up going with this car for the build. So anyways, with that out of the way, you can pick up a normal Bravado Banshee from either the Legendary Motorsport or Benny's website for $105,000. You'll then need to take it to Benny's to upgrade it for $565,000 to the Banshee 900R, and once that's done, you're good to start the build. And when everything's said and done, this replica will cost around $930,000 for the car and the exterior upgrades, and will cost around $1.1 million after all of the performance upgrades if you decide to do them. Once again, this is a pretty pricey build, but the final product is definitely worth it. Not only is this build a pretty good match to Han's car, but the Banshee 900R is also one of the best drift cars in the game and is overall a blast to drive. Anyways, let's go take the Banshee into Benny's and start this build. First off are the bumpers. Now for the front bumper, I just left it stock for my build. However, you could also do the bolt-on arches to match the exposed bolts on the veil side kit on Han's car, and you can also get a matching hood as well. I chose against this option though because I don't think it matches as well with the smooth contours of the veil side front bumper. The other alternative is the classic RS bumper. I think this works pretty well as the front vents match pretty well with the veil side bumper and it also has a really aggressive front lip. However, the canards are just a little bit too much for my taste. Next up is the engine, and for the engine block, I chose the polished valve covers to match the polished look of the 13B engine in Han's car. Next up for the strut brace, you can just leave it stock because it can't be removed, and also Han's car didn't have one. However, for my build, I did choose the polished strut brace because I think it looks super clean, and it also matches up with the rest of the polished areas in the engine bay. Next up is the exhaust, and for this I just chose the chrome tip exhaust as it is a single exit and it matches up best with the single exit exhaust on Han's car. Next up are the fenders, and for these I just left them stock so that way I could keep the exposed bolts over the quarter panels, which is a really good match to the rear over fenders that are on Han's car. Next up is the hood, and for this I just left the hood stock since it has the two vents that match up really well with the vents on the veil side hood. Also, as I mentioned earlier, you could go for the bolt-on arches to match up with the bolt-on arches on the front bumper if you ended up going with that front bumper option. However, as I said earlier, I didn't think this looked as clean or as smooth, which is why I chose against it. Next up is the interior. Now for the ornaments, obviously there are none. Next for the dash, I just left it stock. Then for the doors, I left them stock as well. For the seats, I chose the carbon bucket seats to match the ones that are in Han's car. For the steering wheel, I chose the Apex Clubman wheel as it matches the shape of the wheel in Han's car and it also has the two nitrous buttons. Then for the light color, I chose the Sunrise Orange to match the RX-7 gauge faces. Next are the lights. Now for the headlights, I just left them stock. And then for the neons, I just left them off because Han's car didn't have any. Next is the livery, and for this we of course choose the black two-tone livery. This seems to be a direct reference to the livery on Han's car and is one of the main reasons why I chose the Bravado Banshee 900R over the Anis ZR350 for this build. The Anis ZR350 does not have a livery option as close as this one. Next up is the license plate, and for this I chose the blue on white 3 plate to somewhat match the look of the Japanese plate on Han's car, and if you want to recreate the number as well, it is 1030. Next up we have the respray. Now for the primary color, I just kept it plain and simple and chose a classic orange color. I think this is a great match and since it is a classic shade rather than a metallic shade, it won't mess up with the black on the livery. Then for the secondary color, I chose a classic anthracite black as it matches the color of the roof scoop to the black on the livery. However, if you wanted to, you could just choose a classic orange, as this will get rid of that stripe at the back of the car, but this also means that the roof scoop will be orange and won't match up with the rest of the livery. This choice is really up to you. 
Then for the trim color, I just chose a dark steel. Next is the roof, and for this I just left it stock. Next up are the skirts, and for these I chose the sports skirts because they match the body lines of the car the best. Any other skirt choice just kind of juts inward and doesn't look as smooth in my opinion. And even though these skirts do have the exposed rivets on them, I still think they match up the best with the styling of the veil side skirts. Next up is the spoiler, and for this I chose the mid-level spoiler. Even though it is a bit low in comparison to the spoiler on Han's car, I still think the overall styling of it makes it the best match. Next up is the suspension, and for this I just chose the street suspension. Next up is the tailgate, and for this I chose the smoothed rear deck lid to match up with the rear bumper on Han's car. Next up are the wheels, and for these I chose the chrome Wangen Master wheels in the sports category. I think this is by far the best match to the veil side wheels on Han's car, as the spokes and the deep dish design look almost identical. The other option you could go for if you wanted to are the speed boy rims in the track wheels category. These are also a pretty close match, but they don't have as much of a dish, and they aren't all chrome. However, I do know that wheels seem to be a really common point of debate for these sorts of replica builds, so if you guys think that there are any other good wheels that would match Han's car, feel free to drop them in the comments. Next up are the tires. For the tire design, we just leave it stock. For the tire smoke, I just left the default white smoke color. And finally we have the tints, and for these I did not do any window tints. So that will conclude my replica build of Han's Veilside Fortune Mazda RX-7 from the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Overall, I think the Bravado Banshee 900R was the best choice for this build as it's great for drifting and the looks match up very well with the movie car. As always, if you guys have any questions, feedback, or suggestions for future builds, feel free to drop them in the comments. And if you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful, feel free to drop a like on it and also consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this one. I've got a really quick channel update to give you guys, so if you want to stay for that feel free otherwise thank you for watching and have an awesome day so for anybody who decided to stick around i just wanted to update you all on how i've been doing and my plans for content in the coming months so if you guys aren't aware already i am a full-time engineering student so right now school is pretty tough and i don't have a lot of free time to work on my youtube videos however i have been working a lot on the format of my videos to help make the process of recording and editing them a little bit easier so that way i can post more consistently and i know i have been on and off for the past few months but with the channel growing as consistently as it has along with all the positivity i've received on my videos and through my discord server I'm feeling super motivated to get back into grinding out videos for you all. I know GTA 5 kind of has been dying recently, but I hope that some of my future videos will help alleviate some of that boredom. And in the future, I do plan on extending the scope of my videos to include some content for my live stream to GTA 5 car meets, as well as content from other games such as Forza Horizon 5 when it releases, and also possibly some car extra phrasing in there too. As always, if you guys have more suggestions for content you'd like to see from me, feel free to let me know in the comments or reach out to me through my Discord server. Also, definitely do take a look at my Discord Discord server as I've been trying to revive the Rate My Ride video series, so if you guys want to participate in that, feel free to. Also, you guys might have noticed that now all of my videos will have a little green fundraiser tag below them. Basically what this means is that certain charities will basically advertise alongside my videos and you will have the option to donate to them. I'm calling this effort Little Victories because even though I'm just a small GTA 5 YouTube channel, I'd still like to make a difference where I can for causes that I care a lot about. I currently have 5 fundraisers set up for various charities and they will be cycled through with each of my uploads. So I'd appreciate it if you guys consider donating to them if you're interested. Obviously, there is no pressure to do so, but any contribution you make can and will make a difference. Anyways, thank you all for listening to my little TED Talk. I love you guys, and I'm so thankful for all your support. I'll end it there before things get too mushy, but I hope to see you all in the next video. Thank you once again, and have an awesome day.